Strawberry shortcake. It is a very simple dessert, but oftentimes when it comes to food, simplicity is best. Which means that if you make something that has such a small number of components, like a strawberry shortcake, you better make sure that each of the individual ingredients is top notch. You gotta have that chef's kiss. Now, let's quickly break down a strawberry shortcake. What is it? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You got your strawberries, which are sort of the key ingredient in this thing, because without good strawberries, what the heck are you doing? Then you got your shortcake, which I do wanna focus on, because a nasty, dry, crumbly shortcake cake is not a good thing. And last but not least, you got that amazing whipped cream. Now, if you haven't guessed already from the title or everything I've just said, yes, today we're going to be making a strawberry shortcake, but it's not going to be just any strawberry shortcake. We're going big and we're making a thousand dollar strawberry shortcake. Boom. Now here's the good news. To any of you that want to make a really top-notch strawberry shortcake, you can do the exact same thing as me. Because there's only one small reason that it's a thousand dollars, and that's because of the strawberries. Now at first thought, you might wonder, how exactly are you going to get one thousand dollars worth of strawberries? But then you'll remember that we got a twenty-five hundred dollar cheese wheel, a fifteen hundred dollar leg of jamón iberico, a ten thousand dollar charcuterie board. I mean, come on, we've already proved that we can do crazy things like that. So that's why today, after many, many months of trying to find these, I've secured what I think are the best strawberries in the world. So let's check them out. Now on this table right here, we have $1,000 worth of strawberries, if not a little bit more in fact. Now I know it might look crazy with all the packaging that we have here, but given how precious these are, and you'll see in just a moment, they need to be secured in packaging that keeps them nice and cool. We are not messing around with these strawberries. You know me and I'm not going to make you wait, so let's open them up. Now with this entire process, I wanna be extremely delicate because I don't wanna bruise or break any of these berries. Now, I'll open these up in just a moment here, but I hope right off the bat, you can see how incredibly special these berries look. Now, normally you can find these berries in the wild at the foothills of the Japanese Alps, but Oishi decided they would bring these to New York City and created an indoor vertical farm that mimics all of those elements that you'd see in Japan. So think of rain, air, heat, light, nourishment, pretty much everything that can perfectly mimic what's happening in Japan. I'm gonna start by sliding off the sleeve here, at which point we have the berries just in our container. Now, I know I'm teasing you a little bit by not opening this up right away, but immediately you should notice how much larger these dimples are than regular strawberries you might find at your local market. Let's open these up. Now that we've opened up our berries, you can get a better glimpse of how perfect and beautiful these are. To me, honestly, they all look almost like an emoji, almost too good to be true too perfect. These also come in sleeves of 11. And one thing that I do want to know is that I've always talked to you about how much I care about the environment. And I get it. I know this seems like a lot of packaging and it is. We'll say it how it is. But I've spoken with the company about this and across their packaging, they'll put these recyclable icons so that you know this can be recycled. So much time and effort goes into producing each of these strawberries that you have to keep them safe. So I understand why the packaging is the way that it is. And in fact, now just quickly, I want to show you how cushiony all this packaging is. If you look really closely here, you can see that in each each bit of packaging, there's almost this little cushion. And when you put a strawberry, or in fact your finger here, it doesn't actually touch the bottom of the packaging. It's also very light, so they've tried to minimize the amount of plastic used here. But again, you do have to protect these strawberries. It's just amazing to me how cushiony this is. Can you actually cut the camera for just a quick sec? Yeah. I just wanna see. I just wanna see if the cushion in my face. Dude. Now, before I try one of these, I wanna to go to the market and get some normal strawberries so we can sit and talk about those differences before we make this strawberry shortcake. One sec, let me grab something. Did you see that? Mm -mm. You're fired. What are you doing? You're fired. So we're in like the kind of the makeup, hair, cosmetic style, whatever of Stop and Shop. They don't like us filming in here. We've been kicked out of here before for filming. So I'm doing it in here, but we got our strawberries. You can see here, I picked out a decent batch, but you got those little white spots, which means they're not quite ripened yet. And this just goes to show you what we're working with in terms of differences in strawberry quality. So let's go home, try these out and see how they compare. All right, as promised, we got these strawberries from right up the road. And I just want to show you something. You see the white parts around the top of it here? They've essentially pulled this off the vine and tried to let it ripen a little bit after, perhaps on a truck all the way out from California to Boston. And when that happens, you're losing tons and tons of that flavor. Flavor that photosynthesis would otherwise be pumping into these strawberries. I mean, just look at this one right here. Yeah, it's a little bit red on this side, but on the other, you've got this really bright white strawberry that you just know isn't going to have those amazing sweet sugars. To start, let's try this conventional strawberry just after giving it a little rinse. Sure, so it's fine, right? I mean, we've all had strawberries from our local market and they're okay. They don't necessarily scream that perfect strawberry flavor that you can try to imagine, but they're not bad, they're all right. But now let's try one of our Japanese omakase berries. Before trying it, I do want to tell you that I stuffed all of these into my fridge and now my entire refrigerator smells like strawberry. In fact, just sniffing over the top of these strawberries gives you that amazing strawberry flavor, that true strawberry goodness that you've never ever experienced before. But to start, let's take a little bite. 
Okay, I'll start by saying that those are so, so sweet and sugary. And perhaps more importantly, they taste like a strawberry. I mean, I feel like tasting these now, I've literally never had a strawberry in my entire life. I just wanna swim in a bath of these strawberries. They're sweet, they're delicious, they have all that amazing strawberry flavor that you really just never feel like you've experienced. They're also just softer and more delicate than these harder ones here, which are almost difficult to bite into. Those aren't crunchy, but they're not soft and creamy like these ones. Now, as much as I'd like to eat this entire tray here, I'm not going to. I wanna save them for our $1,000 strawberry shortcake. And before we really start cooking, the last important thing I wanna note is that in Japan and many other countries and cultures, fruit, including of course strawberries, it's a very rare thing and only really brought out on special occasions. Think things like graduation, maybe the holidays, that sort of thing. Now, I know it sounds a little wild that I'm now taking all of these berries and throwing them into an amazing shortcake, but today I just really wanna make something truly spectacular. I've been waiting a long, long time to get some of these berries. So perhaps aside from saving a few to hand out to people and let them try, and hopefully experience true strawberries for the first time, I wanna use them in an amazing shortcake. So without further ado, let's start slicing some of those berries. To start, we're gonna make a few macerated strawberries. And basically what that means is taking off these stems here, slicing them in half, ideally not dropping any of them on the floor because of how precious these are. And then placing these in a bowl with some sugar to let osmosis go to work and pull out all those amazing strawberry juices. Basically by adding sugar to these strawberries, we're gonna let them start to sweat a little bit. Really let out more of that amazing strawberry flavor that we're looking for. And now once our berries are chopped up, we'll add them to a bowl. Then while mixing with our hands, sprinkle over a really light coating of sugar here. Sugar has this amazing ability to draw moisture out of things. So you should actually immediately start to see some of these berries get a little bit shinier. We're gonna place these in the fridge to continue to let them glaze over with that liquid and ultimately these will be placed on our strawberry shortcake. For our brown butter shortbread, which I think is a fantastic type of shortbread given that it's minimal additional effort to get that brown butter but also tastes so much better, we'll go into our mixing bowl with two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, one half cup plus one tablespoon granulated sugar, a nice little pinch of salt, and about two sticks of cold brown butter, which as you can see when I dig into it has all those beautifully brown milk salts on the bottom and has separated a little bit in the fridge. I made this brown butter last night and let me just just tell you it smells incredible. Now we're gonna close this down with our paddle attachment and mix on medium or medium low until it comes into somewhat of a pea-sized texture. Now, once it's in those pea-sized crumbles and kind of looks something like this, we're ready to spread it out. And at this point, we're ready to crumble them onto our baking sheet. Notice I'm not really spraying this because of how much butter there is in here. If you wanna be really safe, you can, but I guess I'm just feeling a little bit lazy today. This looks utterly delicious. Hey, turn off the camera, quick sec. Now press down all that shortbread until it's nice and held together. And you can even use a rolling pin a little bit if it's gonna help. You can see if you look closely, all those little brown specks of the brown butter. Now last but not least, before we put it in the oven, we wanna very lightly score the tops of it. And honestly, it doesn't really matter what tool you use here, but really we just wanna see a little bit of texture on the top. And then we just wanna do a very light sprinkle of sugar, filling in all those little gaps we just created. Then our shortbread goes in the oven at 350 Fahrenheit for about 20 to 25 minutes. Now I guess we never explained how exactly we're gonna get to that $1,000 our strawberry shortcake. And it's actually pretty simple. Each of these trays right here costs $50. I know that sounds crazy, but again, we've talked about how much goes into all these strawberries and they really are amazing. They'll blow your mind and quite frankly, kind of ruin regular strawberries for you for the rest of time. So that's why we're using a heck of a lot of strawberries to make this sauce that's gonna go on and around our strawberry shortcake. Now right here, you're looking at close to 250 strawberries. And again, each of these trays is worth about 50 bucks. So I'm working with some pretty pricey produce here. It's gonna take me a little bit of time to break all these strawberries down, but in just a moment, we're gonna throw them all into a big pot and make an amazing, amazing sauce. Now to make this very powerful strawberry sauce, we're gonna start with just a little bit of water across the bottom of the pan here. Then I'm gonna quickly go through my berries, ripping off that top green part and throwing the berries themselves in. What we're looking to do right now is concentrate as much of the berry flavor as possible in what's eventually gonna be this very condensed liquid. You'll see how quickly the berries break down and turn into almost a mush, after which point we'll toss them in a blender and then strain them through a really fine chinois. Now once this pot is full of all our berries, I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of sugar over the top to start drawing all the moisture out again. It's a very similar concept to how we did those macerated strawberries. And then we're gonna constantly stir these around and mash them as they cook. And this will continue to let off water and reduce down until we have a jelly. Let's check back in a few minutes. Now as you can see, these berries have gotten really mushy, but I don't want them to lose too much of their color. So I'm gonna turn off my heat, come right over here to my blender, and begin to pour some of these into my blender. Wasn't working super well out of the pot, but this works a little bit better. And now we're gonna blend it up. 
And once it's been heavily blended, I'm gonna strain this through my chinois to get it extremely, extremely smooth. But we're not just gonna strain it once. We'll be straining it out until we've gotten every last solid speck out of it. Now, once we've done this first straining process, I'll move my chinois over to my other bowl and pour this mixture back into the chinois strainer. We're then gonna let this spin around and strain out into the new bowl, going back and forth and back and forth until we've gotten out as many air bubbles as well as as many solids out. Again, this dessert has to be absolutely perfect to respect the amazing strawberries that we're using in this video. We'll continue doing this for about 10 minutes, going back and forth and back and forth until we get the smoothest sauce we can possibly get. Eventually, our sauce will look like this and we can set it aside for later use. We'll let our beautiful shortbread rest until we're ready to cut into it with some nice ring molds. Now we'll make a very, very simple whipped cream here, starting with just some heavy cream and a generous amount of my vanilla bean paste, which you should quickly see spread these little vanilla bean dots across my whipped cream. Now I'm gonna take my funnel, and place this vanilla whipped cream into my whipping canister. Believe it or not, I actually don't wanna add any sugar in here right now because we already have a lot of sugar and sweetness from the dish as a whole. So I wanna let this whipped cream be more of a texture than a bunch of added flavor. These strawberries should stand out. First, I'll load up my canister, screw on that cap. That was really cold on my hand. Okay, we're good. Let's do that again. Just bear with me here for a minute. It's already well past two o'clock and we haven't had any lunch yet today, so I'm a little bit tired and hungry. First, we'll screw on the cap of our canister here and then we'll charge it. I'm gonna give it a couple of shakes here just to get that whipped cream going a little bit. Let me show you a good old party trick here real quick. A Little bit of whipped cream on top of your hand and then you whack it. Now for our beautiful crumbly shortcake, it's time to cut out a few rings. So I'm gonna gently press my ring mold into the shortcake, twist around a little bit so it dislodges itself and pull it right out. If I'm very gentle with it, we should have a beautiful ring of brown butter shortcake. I'm gonna use about three of these for the final product here. So I'll dislodge this one again and place this off to the side to prepare for plating our shortcake. So once I get this last one here, we're ready to go ahead and plate. Now, sadly, the ISI whip over whipped. So I've taken matters into my own hands and whipped it by hand. Now to plate our strawberry shortcake, I'm gonna start by placing down one of our brown butter shortbread pieces in the middle of my plate, and then we'll take all of our strawberries, which have gotten a lot of that juice out, and you can see how truly juicy they are in this bowl without having added any liquid, and we'll gently stack up a nice little stack of these strawberries onto our strawberry shortcake. Now, of course I want this to look nice, but I'm also okay with it being a little bit messy. Next, we're gonna go on with a nice spoon of our whipped cream, smashing this down a little bit to make sure it's spread evenly across our strawberries, and at this point, we'll go on with another piece of our shortbread, and then, we'll finish it off with one of our perfect looking berries. Now, last but not least, let's of course go on with some of this very concentrated strawberry sauce. I'm just gonna sprinkle down the edges of our strawberry shortcake here, getting a few nice, beautiful, delicious looking drizzles right down the side of the shortcake. Because this of course is our sauce and every great meal needs a sauce. And now after all of that incredibly hard work, I present to you the $1,000 strawberry shortcake. Let's dig in, shall we? Now, before we do anything, we need to let Pesto get a little try and he was sleeping in his little container here, but now he smells the amazing fragrance of strawberries and he can't wait to get out and get a taste. I do want Pesto before he perishes to experience the omakase berry, so let's let him get a little taste. At first glance, it seems like he likes it a lot, and I know I could easily rest a few regular strawberries over here and then he wouldn't go for them because these have so much more sugar in them. Now because Pesto is pretty prone to diabetes, I actually can't let him eat the entire thing, but I just wanted to show you how a hamster reacted to the omakase berry and just try to look at this guy with a straight face and tell me that he isn't beyond happy right now. I think Pesto absolutely loved it. To start the final part of this video, I want to eat one of these strawberries one last time. Their website said it's supposed to be a very sensual experience. Wait, no, that can't be right. Sensory experience. So let's give this a bite. It really is just crazy having what I feel like is a real strawberry for the first time. I was lucky enough to visit Japan for a short period a long time ago, and I remember seeing in the airport a bunch of individually wrapped strawberries. My first thought was, wow, that's a massive, massive waste. Why would you wrap a single strawberry in its own packaging? And then I looked at the price tag and saw that each strawberry was about 15 or 20 US dollars. Now I have a really solid understanding of the fact that fruit is just a very precious thing, at least in many places. And for that reason, you can see why a Japanese strawberry, which has been treated with this meticulous care and respect is so much better than the strawberries we can get at the market up the road. It all kind of makes sense to me now. Now, as for this amazing strawberry shortcake that we've made today, I want to take a big bite out of it and dig in. The important thing here is definitely getting a bite that has a little bit of everything. We should get all sorts of flavors here and textures as well. So let's see how this tastes. Biting into that gave me that same wow moment that I got the second I tried one of these strawberries for the first time. 
This is of course the first true strawberry shortcake I've ever experienced. And in every possible way, this is absolutely a $1,000 strawberry shortcake. That brown butter shortcake melts in your mouth. Gives you that full fatty coating that you're looking for when you eat a dessert. That strawberry sauce that we put over the top of it may not have the most bright red appetizing look that we're looking for in a strawberry. And that makes sense because we cooked it off a little bit to reduce it. But let me just tell you, each little bite of that has more strawberry flavor than any single strawberry ever could. And we've concentrated it so intensely that that makes sense. Then of course, you have that vanilla whipped cream, which is very, very simple and gives that creaminess throughout the whole dish, as well as that foamy texture. And of course, those strawberries, they let out all their amazing juices. They're so sweet. They have almost just a slight bit of tartness and acid in there to balance everything out, making this the perfect dessert. Now, it's my hope that I can soon visit this actual farm in New York and give you a little bit of a better look at how they make Japanese strawberries in the US. I wanna bring you closer and closer to that experience if you can't taste one of these for yourself right now. But in the meantime, you're just gonna have to imagine and look at all the flavors and smells that we're doing dealing with here. And you're gonna have to trust me that they're pretty amazing. Thank you all so much for watching the video. And thank you again to Oishi Berry for providing these awesome strawberries because they were delicious. For those of you that are new here, we are a family of 2 million and growing. So make sure you whack that subscribe button and don't forget to click the notifications icon too. And please, please, pretty please, don't forget to like the video. I'll see you next time.